Aloha, everybody. I'm Mark Coleman, your host, your co-host today for this week's episode of Talking Tax. My co-host, the real man of the hour, the half hour, is uh, Tom Yamachika, who is president of the Grass, excuse me, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. I'm with the Grassroots Institute of Hawaii. So, uh, Tom, we are going to talk today about your article that you wrote this week. Um, it actually, there have been some changes since you wrote it. It was about Bill House Bill 1537, which wants to uh, change the Constitution, Hawaii Constitution, to allow the state to a attach a surcharge onto investment residential properties. Yeah, if this is this is kind of like Groundhog Day. Uh, <laughs> you remember uh, yeah. back in 2018, yeah. we had the same thing going on. Yeah, we had, we had um, you know the HSTA, the teachers, and you know supporters of education say, "Hey, you know we really need to uh, to have another funding source for teachers. So let's do this constitutional amendment uh, to uh, allow the state to tack on a." A surcharge on uh, on real property tax, right? Um, and well, we're... go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so we have that debate again, um, and uh, uh, we're we're going to kind of see how the debates changed over the years and how it's playing out now. Well, it shows about. Well, it seems like that 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 uh, giving it a little more impetus this year is, is that the is that the proponents are latching on to the popular idea that outsiders uh, have a lot to do with rising home prices in Hawaii, and they're they're it seems that they're using that as a justification this time, and that's why they've changed the language a little bit in in compared to the last time in 2018. Uh, you probably ought to explain why that bill got thrown out and what's different about the new one. Okay, so um, back in 2018, you may remember uh, that uh, it resulted in a fight that went to the Hawaii Supreme Court. The Hawaii Supreme Court uh, tossed out the ballot question. Uh, I mean, it was still printed on the ballots, but it wouldn't. It didn't count anymore because uh, the court ruled that the uh, the ballot measure was invalid because it was too vague. So, so let's kind of start by, uh, you know, showing everybody what the 2018 measure actually said on the ballot. So, if we could have that first slide, please. Okay. So, this is the uh, the ballot question that was on the uh, 2018 uh, ballot, and it's you know deceptively simple. Uh, shall the legislature be authorized to establish, as provided by law, a surcharge on investment real property to be used to support public education? Now, one of the things that we said uh, about this at the time is that it says nothing about tax. Um, so how could voters possibly understand what this sucker is? Uh, if it's a tax that we don't even tell them it's a tax. So uh, the uh, Supreme Court actually held that, you know, the, the solution was more complicated than that, but, uh, but they did rule that the uh, ballot question as posed uh, was uh, too vague, likely to mislead, and therefore not worthy to be on the ballot. And also inadequate in that it didn't explain the context of this proposed change, that it would, in effect, be a serious precedent uh, allowing the state to impose taxes on real property, which currently is the exclusive territory of the counties, right? That's absolutely right. In the, uh, we, g we gave the counties the exclusive right to tax real property in the 1978 Constitutional Convention uh, and the election that followed. Uh, so, and, and it was kind of a 10-year transition back then. So, uh, uh, in the, like, 10 years from, uh, you know, 80, you know, it's a, 72 or what it was to, you know, yeah, I mean, it was a little, it was a little after that when, when the election was uh, was held. 
the 70 was it was the con con but i think the election was held a little bit later mm. but uh but 10 years after that was the transition period and and now it's very clear that the colonies have the exclusive right to tax real property so do you think this wording do you think the wording is any better now that, that i mean it seems like oh well by the way you mentioned that that was on the ballot in 2018, and even though it didn't count, the taxpayers voted it down, right? Yeah, it failed miserably. Yes. Um, this round, targeting you know outsiders, wealthy residential investors, people who are assumed to be living in their homes only half a year or whatever, and can afford to take this take this hit uh, of the surcharge, whatever the amount it might end up being. And that would well, be- I mean, let's 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 uh, take a, take a look at what this version yeah. uh, says. Uh, let's take a look at the as introduced version of the uh, of the question. That's this one here. Uh, it's not that different from the previous one we showed you. No, uh, it still doesn't mention tax. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says uh, surcharge in residential investment property. Uh, the, the two elements that it adds are that it, that it's uh, the property has to be valued at three million dollars or more, and that it excludes a homeowner's primary residence. Which and they added the word think, residential, actually, too. Uh, I'm not sure what the first one said. It said uh, as a surcharge on investment real property. So now they've added the word residential investment real property. Yeah. Um, so. And like really, you, it's and like you say, they're they're trying and they they did create the exclusion of uh, primary residences and actually in the law's definition of investment real property, it also excludes affordable housing projects um, that are subject to a regulatory agreement with either the state or the or the counties, which is interesting. Yeah, um, I mean that. Why is that not? And why is that not investment real property? I mean the yes, and and kind of that, sometimes that includes, like you say in your article, you know, the term actually does include all the equipment on the property. It's 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 pretty comprehensive uh, what what that includes. But the, in your opinion, does this wording well? And and also this wording still doesn't address the historical context. It still doesn't present. Do you think that's an unreasonable? demand of the Supreme Court that this that this language should have included the history, the context, what it means uh, historically for the state tax system? Well, not at all. Uh, and matter of fact, the Supreme Court did include a footnote uh, saying what they thought the proper question would be. And when, when the uh, bill was heard before the Judiciary Committee, the, you know, the supporters of the bills were, were very passionate and they said, Look, you know, we changed uh, the bill in significant ways. It should pass now. And I said, well, wait a minute. You haven't addressed anything that the Supreme Court said was a problem. So how could it pass if you haven't even, you know, dealt with the problems that the Supreme Court told you were there? So at the end of the uh, the Judiciary Committee hearing, you know, the um, the House Judiciary Chair, uh, uh, Dave Tarnas, uh, said that he would fix the bill. And here is what he came up with. Uh, let's take a look at what the uh, House Draft 2 says. Okay. It's a lot of more words now. But but this is basically this, the wording that the Hawaii Supreme Court wanted. So what, So what do you think about that, Mark? Well, I was wondering if if adding this wording makes uh, you know it's it's an improvement, um, but I'm wondering if such a substantial concept shouldn't just have its own constitutional convention. I mean, this is a this is a major major change in in how we run things in the state, and um, even if this language were allowable by the Supreme Court, it, it just seems to me that perhaps this requires a lot more discussion than 
than than a, a small amendment that what that what is perceived to be like a small amendment. They're they're passing it off as something rather small here, one one bill at, in the twenty twenty four legislature. You think this deserves more discussion, along with perhaps the whole tax system of Hawaii? We're the only state that has, after all, that allows the state that where public education is funded by the state and that's what and and that takes the counties off the hook so we're the only state in the country that does that and that's why the state pays for public education that that month but we're also the only state with the get i i don't think anybody else has a get do, do they well, a couple of states come close yeah come close partial gets and that, that what those are well, yeah, yeah. Like, for example, New Mexico has a gross receipts tax. Okay. So it just seemed to me that maybe this is um, this requires a larger discussion about about the precedent here, and and there's other there's other rationales aside from the excuse for having this at all. The the purpose allegedly is to fund DOE, and I'm not sure that's such a good reason either. So, um, no, why why not? I mean. Uh... The the uh, teachers and the teachers union specifically is saying that teachers are woefully underpaid, so so they so they need more money and they need more money now, right? So how so how are you going to how are you going to do that? Uh, I mean, I have my own ideas. Yeah, I I, I do too. Um, <laughs> they they already have you know twenty to twenty five percent of the state budget, and and though they're and and yet and they want more money every year always. But uh, enrollment is declining for the past five years, and we can clearly see that they're not very good at spending the money they already get, which kind of goes back to our conversation last week about the uh, school impact fees. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, they can't spend the money that they have. And so, so there's lots of inefficiencies there. Uh, and plus, they get a lot of money from uh, their, for their capital improvement program. That's a whole other ball of wax you know, for them. They, have, they get all that money, too. Um, so I don't think they're really hurting. I think there's room for um, paying the teachers more if that's really needed um, within the budget that they have personally. And, and of course, too, I, I would also favor more more reliance on private education in the system generally. But, you know, I don't want to get too far afield here. I'm just saying that I don't think that this is a really good reason to be adding to be to be setting this precedent of overturning our tax theory in, in, in the state regarding who gets to, you know, tax real property. Um, yeah. Or, yeah one, one, kind of hesitate. I, on the other hand, this kind of, con this conversation kind of is like saying, well, you know, the language isn't right. It's not going to pass. And so we're giving them a chance to like back up and make language that will work, you know, and I, I don't really want this work. I don't want this to work. Even if it, even if it gets to the ballot, and and survives Supreme Court challenge. I don't really want it to succeed. I, I just don't think this is a. I'm against raising taxes, and that's what this would do. Yeah, uh, one of the one of the uh, things that you got to think about is, well, okay, even if uh, this this were to go on the ballot and and this were to pass, uh, would the money actually go to public education? Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, I mean the. Uh, you know, the, you, you can you can rig the uh, the constitution of the law implementing it so that uh, you know the money from the new tax does go to public education. But what about all the other money that's appropriated to it by the legislature or to the general fund? There's there's nothing that says that the legislature can't say, "Oh, geez, well, you're getting all this money from the uh, you know from from the school property tax, so we don't have to give you so much money anymore." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Out of the out of the general fund, right? I mean, we can we got other priorities. I think they are worried about that a bit. Um, that the, the proponents, you know, they would want to make sure that 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 that, that it, this isn't offset by allocating general funds away from the DOE because they know. yeah. But there's but there's no you know mechanism mm -hmm. you know either either in the constitution or otherwise. To ensure that such an offset doesn't take place, you can't write it in the law. That's right, because, because the budget is just another law. And 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 actually, they're just passing this off to the next legislature, aren't they? Um, the, the 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 mechanics will be um, up to the next legislature or the ones thereafter. So, yeah. So so, so there, there's a lot of 
<laughs> there's a lot of pukas, yeah. you know, that that are left in this analysis. Well, well, do you? Uh, so, so do you think that the the you know the some of the political scientists are saying, well, it depends how people perceive this. If this does go to the ballot, uh, if they perceive it as something really needed to help the teachers, fine, they'll do that. But if they perceive it as more something for um, to raise taxes, just another tax hike in a state where we already have the highest taxes in the country, then um, that could be a problem and, and that it might lose. So what, what do you think would be the prevailing sentiment if this were to go into the ballot? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a lot less uncomfortable with the House Draft 2 version going to the ballot because at least it tells people that we've got a tax hike in, in the works and that we have, you know, changes to the uh, you know, the historical system that's been prevailing with the counties uh, imposing a real property tax. You mean that You mean that paragraph that you said Harness produced is going to be the new one? That, that's, that's the prevailing version right now. I thought the prevailing version doesn't use the word tax and doesn't say anything about the history. Or am I, am I a, a week behind? The, yeah, you're you're a week behind. That was the that was the version of the bill as originally introduced. Well, the original version. Oh, but, oh okay, okay. So, well, the, so, the original version. So house draft House draft two is the latest version. Okay, that's that's the one that's now being considered by the legislature, uh-huh. and and it does talk about tax, um, and uh, you know there is no Senate companion to this, so this is. This is kind of what we're working with right now. Okay, so this is the improvement over the original language of this year's bill, which was supposed to be an improvement over the language of 2018's bill. That's right. Now, I, I think the proponents and, and the PR people are are saying, Jesus Christ, uh, this ballot question contains the word tax in it more than once. How the heck is it going to pass? So, so I think they they're going to have conniptions, and they're going to try to, you know, uh, uh, dumb the uh, the ballot language down uh, so that it doesn't mention tax like it did last, you know, the last time around. Oh. Uh, that's that's what I think the PR people are trying to do. I see, I see. Yeah, I was a little worried about that. I was thinking that if they didn't do that, that could be a deal breaker for the Supreme Court. But now that they've uh, covered that, covered that. Now they're back to the reality of saying we want a tax hike. It's more clear. Yeah, and that's what the Supreme Court wanted them to say. Right. So, 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 House Draft Two at least says that, and it says that we've got a tax hike. Uh, you know, not in so many words, but you know, there's a lot of words there. But, 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 but it does contain the word tax. I, I think I think the you know the PR people, like I said, are are hating it uh, with a with a big passion. But um, what they need to do at this point is to uh, basically convince the Senate that, um, you know, a, a further watering down of the language is in order. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where this, where this sucker is going to go from here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, maybe it'll be heard by uh, you know, the Senate Education Committee and then going to Ways and Means. Who, uh, what they're going to do with it, I have no idea. Is there any chance that this will be deferred, do you think? Well, given the fact that um, the teachers are pushing it very, very hard, um, and and the teachers' union is very powerful, as as you probably know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's probably going to get through the legislature in some form. Mm. If it does, it does not go to the governor, Okay. The governor does not have have the opportunity to veto this. All oh, right, mm-hmm. because it's not a law. It goes to the ballot. So if it passes, the legislature is going to go on the ballot, and then I, I think the counties are going to go into conniptions again because, uh, in terms of practical fact, this con am is messing with their primary revenue source. Right, and in your article, and, you, in your article, and, you mentioned that. Uh, there's the problem of their their financial, you know, ability to float bonds and such. Yeah, their, their bond underwriters are, are not going to want the state messing with the primary revenue source, N- not at all. So, so, um, uh, so, so the colonies are going to be, you know, uh, 
fighting this con am tooth and nail like they like, like they did last time. And they're already doing it, right? They've already all filed uh, testimony against this, right? Yes, yes. They uh, they're definitely opposing this. And and so th this is a, truly a foot in the door if it were to pass. And and as we know, there's no such thing as a temporary tax. And there's and and once you get your foot in the door on any other kind of a tax, uh, let's say they put a sunset on it, you know, allegedly. Oh, this will just be like a temporary tax. It, if if you get your foot in the door, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Uh, from there, it just expands. It's not going to be limited in the future to just this one surcharge, probably, right? Yeah, I mean, once once you um, you, you know, uh, create that hole in the shield, the hole's not going to you know is not going to shrink. It, it's going to expand and and cover more things. Well, the employee uh, tax system is in perhaps in need of a of a more um, careful and 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 thoughtful um, revamp or in a review. This, like I said, I think this is like coming out of the blue. Uh, we had it in 2018, déjà vu, but it's still very focused, and it seems kind of very irresponsible to try to just do it for this one thing. Yeah, I mean, that's one union, right? Well, what what then you know prevents HGEA from coming in, for example, and saying, "Hey, HSTA got this uh, the, this this uh, special funding source. We want one too." And then the UPW comes in, and then you know UHPA, and then you know whoever else uh, you know represents uh, government workers. Um, you know the the parade just starts. Mm -hmm. There must be some other groups that would be interested in affordable housing, you know, whatever it is, um, government programs to build homes or whatever. Yeah, you can. The the, the reasons for for tax increases are endless, as we know. Every year, there's even in an election year. This year, you know, it's it's an election year, and they're talking about raising taxes all across the board. There's all kinds of tax hikes being proposed, which is it's it's never ending. And it's kind of perplexing, actually, considering the burden that we're already bearing. Yeah, I mean, uh, don't these guys know that we're losing people at the rate of like eleven thousand a year? Yeah, uh, and there was what just a study the other day that that estimated the tax loss because of everybody leaving. Did Did you see that? Uh, I I I I did see that. Uh, I I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but but I did see that. Yeah. What do you remember about it? Yeah. So that lead with few, with taxes and higher housing costs driving people away, uh, that leaves fewer of us to pay the remaining tax burden, which hasn't gone down. So uh, and 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 yet there's more. You know, there's this desire to keep increasing taxes. So basically, this if this all goes through, and and, and you're suggesting it might, it has a good chance. That's what the political scientists seem to think. Um, Colin Moore and so on up at the UH. Um, it'll really become a PR battle then on it during the election. That'll be kind of a, a major focus of the election. Yeah. In 2018, the, you know, the businesses organized and, uh, and they uh, put up a very spirited battle on the airwaves and on TV, um, as did the proponents. So, uh, if this, if this measure passes, I think you can expect the same thing to happen. Well, that's um, too bad, actually, um, that that would have to be an issue at all. I, I, I think considerable, you know, I think a lot, of, but I think a lot of the politicians might might not be enjoying that conversation at all. Uh, probably not, and and I think you know one thing that's kind of been left out of the uh, equation so far is, well, uh, DOE, um, why can't you produce financial information? Why can't you, you know, cut your costs? Why do you need, you know, so many people at the, you know, at the super grade levels, the, you know, uh, you, you got your uh, superintendent of education, you got your assistant superintendents, you got your complex area superintendents, you got your and then you and then you got your school principals, 
I mean, how many layers do you need? Well, my personal experience is that um, most people who work for the government, a lot of them, probably most, actually do work pretty hard. Um, but that it's not how hard you work, as my former boss at Pacific Business News used to say. It's so much work you get done. And, and what are you achieving? They might be putting in full hour days and working really hard, but what are they really doing um, for the good, you know, for the greater good? It's a wise um, educational standards, really. Uh, anything to brag about? I don't think so. Uh, you have schools that are, some schools that are better than others, which is, you know, good thing. Um, but in, in general, on average, I don't think Hawaii even ranks very well in, in terms of educational performance. So is the DOE even doing a good job, regardless of how hard everybody's working? That's kind of why I'm bringing up the idea of that we might need more homeschooling or more charter schools or even just more people in private schools. Um, this heavy reliance on the DOE, plus how much considering they're taking from the you know from the Fed, from the general fund. Um, they say their percentage is going down, but then again, um, the amount of money they're taking billions. Yeah, I you know. And, and and it's 168,000, is it for kids? Forget the number. But anyway, uh, it's it's perplexing. Well, it's a it's a it's a great topic that we're talking about here, Tom. I think it'll be uh, a major thing that everyone will be talking about in the weeks ahead, uh, especially if it makes it to the ballot. Uh, I, I I personally hope that it doesn't. I think there's a lot of good reasons to be against another tax increase just on the face of it no matter what the good reasons are or who the scapegoats might be that we think we can tax, you know, without any uh, behavioral changes that could negatively affect our economy, uh, affecting investment and such. But um, your last take on all of that? Well, I mean, let, let, let the voters say what they need to. Uh, but, you know, don't, don't try to pull the wool over their eyes. We've tried that before, and that's, that's not going to work. Very good point. Very good point. Well, on that happy note, Tom, thank you very much for your wisdom today and your knowledge. Um, everybody else, um, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun <laughs> to talk about another complicated and vexing issue here on Talking Tax on Think Tech Hawaii. If you like this program, click the subscribe button on your screen there, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, y'all. Aloha. Aloha.